To continue a look at this week's news with our Reporters Rewind, our guests today are national TV journalist and anchor Duarte Geraldino and broadcast journalist Matt Locker, who you can find on the Arab News Channel, uh, Ibru, is that how you Ebru say TV. it? Ebru, Ebru TV. Ebru TV. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you for having Thank me. Thank you. Are you ready? We're ready. Let's on do it. On your mark, get set. <laughs> let's okay. go. Matt, let's start with the, the horrible tornado that yeah. took place in, in, in Moore, Oklahoma. You were in the newsroom covering the tornado that happened a day or two before. Exactly. I was covering the one on the weekend, and as we're gathering, I'm looking up at the live monitors, and oh my goodness, this is happening again. And that's where it hit me. It's like I'm here watching on a satellite live images of people losing their lives and everything. The, the, and it, I mean, it was incredible. I mean, this was, uh, you know, this was a tornado on steroids. It was, a, it was extraordinary, and it, it went for a long time, and it damaged these schools. And now the big controversy right now is how much do we invest in rebuilding? The mayor of Moore recently suggested that not just the schools be rebuilt with these shelters, but also every house. Some people are saying that's going to be an expense that I may not be able to afford. Yeah, and you bring up, I wasn't going to bring it up yet, but since you've already jumped into it, it brings up sort of the politics of this mm. thing. You know, Oklahoma, uh, some people have called it a purple state, but it's largely been a red state. There's a lot of conservative politics going on there, which means smaller government, don't want to depend on the government. But in a time like this, there's a disaster. All of a sudden, the government becomes important. Uh, and, and then, you know, elect, elected officials have spoken out about whether or not they need that money. Do you kind of paint themselves in a corner at a time like this? Yeah, they're, they're, definitely. It's, it's, you're painting the corner. You need the help. The help needs to come to you. Um, and we saw the president, once again, like after Sandy, speaking that help is coming and the federal government will be there. And still Sandy victims are without power. They're still without homes. It's, it's enough, you know, let's see the action and not so much the talk. But this help has to be ongoing because this rebuilding process is going to take a, t a long time. And along this way, the politics come back and there's a lot more fighting. I mean, you look at things like how many tornadoes this area, and as someone who's been in FEMA, you know this very yeah. well, this, is, this continues to happen. I think some, I read a report that in the last 15 years they've had four major tornadoes, two of which were Category 5. These mm -hmm. are extraordinarily strong tornadoes. So the question becomes, okay, well, how much money do we need? Is it just to rebuild to where we were or to rebuild much, much better where we can be? Right. And then in Oklahoma, it's on bedrock. It's very difficult to put mm -hmm. in the underground shelters. You have to blast, and it adds a lot of expense to reconstruction. Now, when I was with FEMA, we were uh, responding to Hurricane Maryland, which decimated the island of St. Mm -hmm. Thomas. Mm -hmm. And there they changed the building codes. Um, they changed it so you had to put hurricane clips on. There were no more eaves on the roofs to pull things up to prepare. So there was additional expense to make the investment for the future, and it's paid off. I mean, there has not been a Category 5 to hit that region since, thank goodness. Um, but yeah, they're, they're, and I think in Joplin as well, they've yes. made changes in the building codes. They did. I mean, the other concern is how much more the house is going to cost. So you know, the economy is not that strong. Yeah. So how are real people going to buy these houses? And that's the thing. That's mm -hmm. the thing because the, you know the truth is this hit a working class neighborhood. It was not mm -hmm. a wealthy area. These are people that work hard. They make make a living wage, but they don't have a whole lot of extra money. And I read somewhere that the cost uh, per house mm -hmm. to add that safe room was going to be a four thousand additional dollars. Well, for someone mm -hmm. that doesn't just have that laying around, that's a whole lot of money. For some people, that's two, three months income to throw into that, and that's pretty extraordinary, just to just do it. Yeah, in, indeed. And, you know, I, you know, I wonder about the, the, uh, the wisdom of the politics. You know, there are a couple of politicians, and I can't remember exactly who said right. what, so I don't want to say okay. names incorrectly, but saying, okay, listen, um, we will take this money, but we also have to have tax cuts to make up for yes, it. Yes, I, I, I did. Re uh, yeah, a lot of that is posturing. Right, and uh, we're in the media age, and everyone has to look good for the constituents. Bottom line, the money's got to be there. They are going to rebuild. And um, the, other, the other thing is something tragic like this actually pulls people together. And that, that, that's a dichotomy, because when we're watching the storm on one monitor in the newsroom, we're watching uh, disagreeing people bickering about another issue on the other. And you, and you see the dichotomy, and then when things really go to heck in a handbasket, people do pull together. I keep on thinking about those 10 poor kids who lost their lives, and that right. puts everything 
into perspective, Debbie. Yeah, then all of a sudden tax cut or, or nothing else uh, means anything. All right, well, we, of course, um, wish the people of Moore, Oklahoma well, and uh, it's a long season. Tornado season is not uh, mm. nearly over yet, so we hope that it's not so bad. So let's move on to our next topic today. You know, the, the Boy Scouts of America, you know, been a, it's a, it really is an American institution. It's symbolic. That's yeah. a juicy story right now, and it's it, one of these things where people are saying it's about time, but it is my perspective that for the Boy Scouts, this was about institutional survival as a group. How are we going to survive? Because there were two things at play. One, you had dwindling demand. Membership was going down. Right now you have something along the lines of 2.6 million Boy Scouts in that organization. But it's going down each year. But will it go down from the conservative side? We saw a soundbite earlier of a father saying he's pulling his kids out now. Yeah, some people are saying take them out because this will draw in even more people who weren't allowed to go in there. Um, if you look at the vote, the vote was really right. critical. 60% of people voted in favor of allowing uh, children, teenagers who are homosexual to be part of this organization. These were younger parents. These are the parents that they need to survive. So this is quite frankly the future of this organization. If they don't feel like they're satisfied, they're going to put their kid in some other group. But you know, it bears noting, though, and I'm sorry to cut you yeah. off, it bears noting, though, that they kind of had to do this in, in bite-sized pieces because oh, they had yeah. to take off the table allowing openly gay leaders, leaders from the vote in order for it to come to a vote. Right, so is this step pacification to stop the next step I from like happening? I like that character. Say that again. Pacification? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, pacification. There's not a like word, that. I'll make one up. I like that. <laughs> um, or, or is it baby steps? You know, is it like... We've done enough, you know, we, we've, we've come halfway. It's so tricky because you also got to look at financing. Companies like Intel and Merck, they have stopped financing these groups because their policies don't jive with Intel. So they're like, we're not going to give you money. I mean, we're not co-signing on that. Um, but then the other issue is, again, with the adults, uh, there is lingering resentment because a lot of these groups are backed by the religious groups. And because of the whole Catholic mistrust of molestation, there is a fear, whether it's real or not, of having adults who are gay and what that may mean. Again, there's no proven science that says that there's a higher likelihood, but that is a fear within these groups. Yeah, well, the, the, the real issue is that the Boy Scouts of America had to face this. This is an issue in the 21st mm. cent century, and they had to face it, you know, good, bad, or ugly, and so you might as well get started now on you know, it. Interesting to note, just really quickly. Very I, quickly, because we're out of time. Okay, I, I had a, a colleague recently come out as a parent of a child who was gay, and he's like, I don't know what to do. Where do I take my child? Yeah, and, 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 and you know, yeah, it brings up a whole lot more questions to that. We'll have to ask at another time. Yeah. <laughs> so nice chatting with you, Deborah. <laughs> Matt Locker, Duarte Edurino, uh, Geraldino, excuse me. I know, it's a I'm just making up a name yeah. for you, <laughs> Geraldino. Thank you guys very much. Thank you. Have a great holiday weekend. Great, thank you too, Mike. All right, bye-bye.